apogee of American military power was probably 2000. We had won the first Gulf War when Saddam Hussein had stupidly put his army out in the desert and let us crush it. And he kept out of population centers, which he, he made it neat and clean. And, and so we looked unbeatable. For the next decade, we had to deal with the Balkans and we dealt with the no-fly zones. But in reality, our military power was based on the perception of our military power. The world felt like the United States military could do whatever it wanted. After 2001, as we first flexed and used our military power, it became pretty obvious how long the dog's leash was. And there was always a leash on the dog. There always is. There are limitations to what you can and are willing to do. And so the more those limitations became known, actually our, our military power goes down. And so, in reality, I think that we should seek to have a very, very strong military that in the minds of our foe is unbeatable. And part of that involves only using it when you absolutely have to. We're not as good at intervention as we think we are, and I don't think we think we're good anymore. Intervention is very, very difficult. And the reason is, you're not just going into a geographic land. You're going into a culture, you're going into a political environment, you're going into something that has existed for a long time. When we went into Afghanistan, there were all the players in the country, the former warlords, politicians, people. We really didn't know them. We didn't have a playbook that says, here's the history. We didn't know that 10 years before, 20 years before, this had happened, which was really driving the motivation of many people. So it's like us going into a neighborhood and trying to reorganize things without knowing all that's happened or the religions or the backgrounds. And when we try to intervene in those, we reach in with good intentions. And typically, because Americans are in a hurry, we do things in an expedient fashion. We go in and we say, OK, we're going to do this because we can do this quickly. We create second and third order problems. We would go into parts of Afghanistan, and somebody would emerge who spoke English and says, I can help you. What do you need? Well, we're going to build this camp. We need." this kind of help or this gravel. He says, I got it, I'll, I'll get it. He produces it. And it's at a reasonable price. It's, it's reasonable to us, it's not reasonable to them, it's way inflated. So what we've done is we've economically empowered this guy, who may be one player in this quilt of different groups. So now you've created a disproportionately powerful person. It looks for everyone else as though we've selected and anointed that individual as our person. He might be corrupt. He might be a warlord. Then we need help. We need people who speak English to help us. So we need drivers. We need interpreters. And who shows up to do that? Doctors, lawyers, teachers, and judges. They come because we're paying more, because we want to be fair. So we strip the techno uh, technocrats out of society. And the people who have to make the society work are working for us doing jobs that aren't building the long term. So these are all not sins that we intend to make. They're unintentional, kind of like a big puppy with big paws and a, and a slobbery mouth going around making mistakes. And it makes the problem in many cases much worse.